my first instrument against my will was piano. Uh, I, my, both my older sisters played piano. My mother played piano and was a piano teacher. So at uh, age five, uh, I started playing piano, and, and my teacher said, you, you have to let him stop because he's crying at every lesson. He hates this. And, uh, but he needs to play a musical instrument because he has good rhythm ability and, um, and let him figure out what he wants to play. So I didn't have to figure it out. I wanted to play drums. I saw Gene Krupa on the Bird Griffin show. And I said, I want to be that. And uh, so at eight years old, um, I finally was admitted into the summer band at the, the grade school and was a soloist in the fifth grade band as a third grader. And he said, you need to get with a private teacher. So. Uh, I got with the private teacher immediately and just had snare drum studies for five years, just rudimental snare drum. So that's how I got started on it. Later on, I, I went to uh, Indiana University and went for two years. And uh, we had pretty heavy class. John Clayton was there and Peter Erskine and Ken Aronoff, the drummer, and, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of horses there, as we would say. and. Um, and Peter left after his first year to go with the Stan Kenton band, and I left after my second year to go in the Tommy Dorsey band, and then it just kept escalating from there to Lionel Hampton and, you know, passing around the big bands. So no, no more after uh, Indiana University. First jazz album uh, ooh, that I bought, I, it was, um, you know, it was a cutout that my father bought, and I, it was one of those reissues of a Count Basie band, and I don't know the original title of it, but Papa Joe Jones was on drums. And I said, man, that that's, reminds me of that Gene Krupa thing I saw on TV. And, I, and this, you got to understand that this was, uh, this was early to mid-60s, and, um, and it, it, the music grabbed me. My sisters were listening to more uh, you know, Elvis and, and then eventually Beach Boys, um, and the drumming didn't cap capture my attention like Joe Jones did on the record. Uh, the first real record that I remember buying with my lawnmower cutting and uh, grass cutting money was um, the trio plays Oscar Peterson and Count Basie uh, first time with Duke Ellington on Columbia. And, and those, I mean I played to those all the time and just envisioned myself on the bandstand with those bands and, and would just try to learn every every note. No, I didn't try. I learned every note on those records and and uh, could could uh, see myself in the band, which eventually happened. So, you know, that's that's a word to the youth. The, the mountain ain't that high. <laughs> if you really want to do it, you've got to do a lot of uh, homework and a dedication to, to be in that drum seat, you know, so. Well, in, in growing up in Richmond, Indiana, there wasn't a lot coming through there, even though we've had a, a wealth of musicians from there, just from Richmond alone. Joe Hunt, uh, Harold Jones, Andy Simpkins. Um, and, and so we'd have to go to Indianapolis or Dayton or Cincinnati. But there was one high school in, in Anderson, Indiana, Madison Heights High School, and they presented concerts in their gymnasium. And the series was the Glenn Miller Orchestra, Buddy Rich Big Band, um, Stan Kenton Orchestra, and um, uh, the band that, uh, oh, it was Buddy DeFranco leading the Miller Band, yeah. And so I, I bought the whole series for like $5 a concert, you know, back then. And I, that's the first time I'd seen Buddy Rich, and it just knocked me out. And then Stan Kenton Band, and, I, and the Basie Band was also on. I saw Harold Jones from my hometown playing with the Basie band. And I was, um, I, I want to say I was um, uh, 15, you know, 14, 15. And I remember driving back in the, in, to Richmond in the car and, and I said, I want to I be Buddy Rich. You know, I want to do that. I want to be able to, to play like that. And I'm going to work my butt off to try to play like that. And of course, every other drummer has said the same thing and nobody will ever achieve it, but at least it gives you something to shoot for. <laughs> My first gig that I got paid was, again, in Richmond, Indiana, and um, I, I, I was a sophomore in high school, and we, again, I'm so fortunate because it was a town like that had two restaurants with two piano trios. 
I mean, one in each restaurant, and one was Denny's, D-I-N-N-I-E-S, not the, not the chain. And the other one was Elizabeth Parker's restaurant on Main Street. And we sat in the window of the, of the restaurant with our backs to Main Street, and people would see us playing. They'd pull over and come in and, you know, have the roast beef, uh, whatever, you know. And, and, I, and I, I, think, I think I got like $35 or something for the first job, that I, which was good then. I mean, but, you know, later on when I played at Dante's in 78, he paid $35, you know. And I, got, I found one pay stub the other day. I was going through a bunch of stuff. <laughs> $5.25 on the pay stub from Dante's in 1980. And I looked a little closer. I had dinner that night, and he deducted this, the, the linguine and clam sauce from my paycheck, you know. So, <laughs> so you know, 1968 uh, or 69, you know, $35 was pretty good. <laughs>